Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is the general overseer of Sunrise Banner Bible Church worldwide with international headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is commissioned by God to provide the ministry of the Word of God and to disciple the whole world through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sunrise Banner Bible Church, we believe in God, we believe what God says. Lift up your two hands as I read the prophecy. Any place you discover promise, you discover prophecy, you say amen to it. Lift up your hands and close your eyes. My God shall cover you with his feld. My God, our God, his name is called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It will cover Nigeria. It will cover Africa. It will cover Asia. It will cover Europe. It will cover Australia. It will cover North America. It will cover South America. All over the world. It will cover it with its feather. Under its wings, this world is going now. In him we will trust. He's going to be our shield and our buckler. No more fear. I say no more fear. Every fear colonial virus has brought to the world. We cast you out in the name of Jesus. No terror by night. No arrow by day. And no destiny that walk in darkness that walk in destruction shall near us in the name of Jesus a thousand and a ten thousand but none will come near us none will come near you none will come near me it will not near you I say it will not near you the Lord is with you in the morning. The Lord is with you in the afternoon. The Lord is with us in the night. Every member of this family, you are covered with the blood of Jesus. It's done in the name of Jesus. No death in Nigeria. No death in the world anymore. Coronavirus in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We curse you in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus mighty name we pray. Father as we come to today's message. We pray that you speak to us now. For in Jesus most wonderful name we pray. Everybody give me a celebrating amen. You can please be seated. In all our Sunday message for this month. Who will remind me the theme for the month? Can I hear you? Why are you saying like that? Can you say it like you mean it? That hope will not die. I'm not hearing your amen. I say our hope will not die. We have hope in the Lord and the Lord will not disappoint us. All this terror, thank God, they are dead now. Be free. I say they are dead now. You can be free. You can walk. You can move. Nothing will touch us. Anybody that is sick anywhere, as I speak now, they are healed. In all the hospitals, they are healed. The hand of the Lord will save them. 
God proved to the world that look, there are scientists, but I am the master of scientists. And so they are looking for vaccine, they can't see it. But the vaccine is in the blood of Jesus. It will cleanse all those devils away from this world. And it will give us peace again. Amen. Give me great, great amen. amen. The Lord will give us peace again in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we are going to continue with Psalm 31. Throughout this month, we have been studying from Psalm 31 in all our Sundays. And so we want to continue again from Psalm 31. Today we are looking at verse 22 and verse 24. Verse 22 through to verse 24. Verse 22 to verse 24. Are you there? I'm looking at the message today. David sensitized but not abandoned. David sensitized but not abandoned. It came to a time in his life when they were sensitized, the Lord sensitized him. As you look at our nation, Nigeria, you look at the world. It's possible the Lord sometimes we want to sensitize the people, call their attention to something. I had the other day that in China they were having 30 days prayer and fasting for the first time. And so I had the other day all the people that have said there was no God, today they are looking for God. The Lord sometimes could allow some things. To call the attention of the people. The attention was already leaving the Lord. And the Lord needs our attention. Now he has gotten our attention. Everything will be alright. Give me amen. amen. Will you have ever believed that China will have 30 days fasting and prayer? Not possible in this world. Today they know there is God. Could you have ever believed that we push all those live animals, those pigs, and put them into fire and kill them? Today, there is God. Mentality has changed. Thinking has changed. They now knew that technology is not God. That God is still alive. God is calling the attention of everybody. That was what he did to David at this time. He says, David, I need your attention. He sustains him. He didn't abandon him. If the Lord allows some things to happen, that doesn't mean that he has abandoned us. He has never abandoned us. He sustained, but he doesn't abandon. And so, he's going to pick you up again. How many of you is the Lord picking up? Will he pick you up this week? Yes. Talk to me. Is he picking you up this week? Yes. The Lord will pick us up again in Jesus' name. Give me great, great amen. amen. In Psalm 31, verse 22. For, for time, I'm going to be very brief on this message. For I said, in my haste, I am cut off from before thy eyes. Nevertheless, thou hast, thou what? Heardest the voice of my supplication. When I cried unto thee. It says. I didn't know I was in a haste. To say. My life is finished. I didn't know I was in a haste. I, you know what has happened. You understand what has happened. If you look at. Um, in chapter 27. Let me show you something. In verse 14. 27 verse 14. In verse 14 it says. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, where? He just finished preaching that message. And as I finished preaching this message, he knew what God did for him. Don't forget, in chapter 25, 26, God has done wonders for him. He had just killed the lion. 
And he started preaching this message. He says, look, when I was abandoned from my father's house and everybody threw me away, I wait on the Lord. And the Lord showed me his strength. And then he took them to verse, 20, verse 14. He says, I am preaching to you. Wait on the Lord. I say. This is not the Bible saying, I say. This is not God saying, I say. I'm saying it because I just experienced it. I just tested it. And I have tested that the Lord is with us. So wait on the Lord. And while he just finished that, the Lord says, I'm going to test that message you preach. And so as we get to chapter 13, chapter 31, open your Bible to chapter 31, and then as you cross to verse 1, he started singing the Psalms of hope. And started rejoicing. And look at verse 1, it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be what? Ashamed. You see, I don't want to pass through that in a pass through in my father's house before. My life has changed. It says, Never! Will I go through that again? But he didn't know that just after 13 verses, God is going to let them pass through again. You know, sometimes when you pass through it before and you come back again to pass through another one, that is an evidence. The Lord is just testing your victory of yesterday. So if you conquered yesterday, let me know whether you still understand how you conquered yesterday. You will conquer yesterday, conquer today, and conquer tomorrow. Where is this church? Where have you gone to? Did you retire? Are you still with me? Talk to me. Are you still with me? Praise the Lord. You will conquer yesterday. Today. And tomorrow. Yeah. No, there are people who conquer yesterday. When it comes to today, they run away. I prophesied on you again. You know this church, you know the challenger is because we are not throwing oil, we are not throwing karat, we are not jumping. So people don't believe that was the problem of Paul. They say he's weak. But there is anointing inside of me. How many of you believe that? Okay, I say I prophesied on you again. You are overcoming yesterday, today, and tomorrow in the name of Jesus. See that. So the overcoming of Paul was all the way. It, I mean, of uh, David was all the way. He did that yesterday. He did that today. He did that again tomorrow. And when it now come to Psalm 31, it started with Psalms of hope. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. It says, Into thy hand I commit my spirit. I don't want anything to touch me again. Those kind of pains I went through, I don't want to go through it again. I commit my spirit. Thou hast done what? Redeemed me. I know you have done it once and for all. And then it now says, O Lord, God of truth. O Lord, God of truth. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. And then it says, And thou hast shot me. And thou hast not shot me up into the hand of who? Of the enemies. And so he was just praising God and was just happy. And then he now come to, if you look at that place, he say, Thou hast set my feet where? In the large room. He said, you have given me a big room. I was living in one self-contained. Now you have given me two bedroom flat. Now you have made my life better. Just after that testimony. Now look at verse 9. He said, have mercy upon me. Oh Lord, I am in what? In trouble. Trouble started again. Problem started again. Wahala started again. And when he thought that the battle would have been over, is when the battle kicked up again. Check your life. What you are going through now, you never bargain for it. You never planned you were going to go through it. Brethren, am I talking to you? 
it was not your purpose. You never proposed for it. What you had in mind is not what is happening. And you just see that this thing is happening like this and you don't even know what you're going to do about it. But God is still alive. It will sensitize you. It will not abandon you. It will correct you. It will not abandon you. And so the Lord says, David, I need to correct you. You have took the wife of Uriah. I need to correct you. You have lost the kingship. I need to correct you. Your man after my heart. I need to correct you. But I'm not going to abandon you. If the Lord corrects you, don't run away. And that is why he now said in verse 22, he says, see me. My fear was because I thought that God was going to abandon me. I was in a haste. I almost gave up. I almost abandoned the Bible. I almost dropped this work. I say no way. I don't know time like that in your life. When there is disappointment on the right, there is disappointment on the left, everywhere you looked at your life. Look at what happened to David. Let me show you now. In verse 10. Look at verse 10. Please everybody look at this is Bible church. If you are not ready to open Bible, you can't be here. This place, you open Bible. We don't talk story here. It's Bible. What did I say? Tell me. Bible. Shout it. Bible. Say it. Bible. Do you love it? Yes, you love it like me? Yes, we look at it. Yes, Let me see it. Bible. Say it again. Bible. Some people don't have it. They have paws. They have bags. They have painting inside the back. They don't have it. Buy Bible. Say I will buy Bible. You're not talking. Say it. <laughs> Some people doesn't have it. They say I have it on my tablet. It's good. It's good. But also have a copy of the Bible. You will have a copy of the Bible in Jesus' name. So now look at verse 22. David says, For I said in my where? In my haste. I was in a hurry. Why? Look at verse 10. It says, for my life is spent with what? Griefs. I am in pain. I'm seeing pain again. I never wanted any pain anymore. I never wanted any disappointment anymore. It says, I am in griefs. And it says, I'm my year. Is sunken. I have not married. Now I am 45. My years are sunken. I am almost dying. I've been in pastoral 40 years, 30 years, 20 years. Even a house I've not built for my wife. My years are sunken. My life is finished. See me. I'm now old. Not even a bicycle do I have. My years are sunk. David got to that point. And he says, I almost give up. Don't give up. You're not talking to me. I say, don't give up. Amen. Will you give up? No, Will you run away? No, Will you drop the Bible? What if you get to 35 and you've not seen husband? Will you still love the Lord? Don't answer it out. Answer it inside of you. What if you get to 32, 33, 34, 35? Now it's 40 already. Nobody's coming. Are you going to say, okay? And one man came and said, can I do test? You are not a cara. They can only test Akara, not you. Nobody can test you in Jesus' name and say, can I do test? You tell that person, I don't say granite. You can go to granite and test. 
you know, in the village those days, before we buy granola, we say, give us a test. <laughs> this is gospel. This is Christ. This is heaven. You're not going to play with it. Say, I will not play with it. You will not play with it. And then David got to a point when he says, I almost give up. Don't give up. You're back to the Lord. Hold the Lord. You're not going to give up in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 11. Let me show you why he wanted to give up. In verse 11, he says, I was in a what? Reproach among all my enemies. And then he says, especially my neighbors. All those my neighbors, they said, look, this man, poor, this man, Richard, this man is no longer alive. Do you know what happened to you when you couldn't pay your house rent? And then your neighbors, they will say they are, they say they bring letter from court for you. And then while you are looking at the letter, your neighbor will pass and say, good morning, Noga. He went into his own and said, they just bring letter for that man. They are sending him away. And then his wife will look at him and say, let them send him away. She be the other day his wife talked to me anyhow yet. Yeah. All the neighbors of David were against him. Life was so bad. He said, I almost gave up. Touch yourself and say, I will not give up. You are not talking to me. Say, I'm not going to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't worry, it will be fine. It will be all right. It will be okay. Life will be fine again. How many of you believe that your husband will do well again? Don't put up your hand. Don't put up your hand. Just touch yourself like the inside, secretly. secretly. How many of you believe that your wife is going to be fine again? You see, that attitude that is killing you, just manage it. Just keep on. You see, I was doing a statistics one of these days, and so I was on the system and I was doing a statistics. And that statistics took me for three hours. And I was doing that statistics. I tried to want to know what has happened in marriage. And so I discovered that 85.2% of the divorce today are between six and one year in marriage. And so I discovered that those ones that are both ten what has happened to them is not divorce, but they are single in marriage. They are married, but they are single. Have you seen something in the letter before? People that are married, but they are single. Three years, they've not seen their husband. You are single. One year, where is the man? He's in Jerusalem. Where is the woman? He's in Nazareth. God forbid. Marriage, but what? Single. And the love is so dead that even in the house, they don't eat together. Before the husband come, the woman has finished the meal. And then he said, I've eat. I was waiting for you, but you didn't come early. Love is dead. You were not doing like that when you married, Ellie. Everything is gone. I almost give up. When life gets to that level, if you don't look up to Christ, you will give up. I pray you will not give up. Amen. When you married that woman, you only used to wash her clothes. You used to go there. You say, give me the clothes. Let me watch for you. I want to help you. Today, if she even drop a cloth on your bed, you say you dirty everywhere too much. You're even quarreling now, now that she drop children cloth. You give her the belly yourself. You brought those children yourself. Today that those children cloth is causing problem in your house. I almost give up. When the love is dead, likeness finished. Things will turn around again. Amen. Can you give me a great, great amen? amen? I say things will turn around again. Amen. 
and you are coming back, you will live the life, a great life in Jesus' name. And so David keeps singing that song. I keep singing that song. And from that song, he told the Lord, he says, I am a famine. You are whole. Don't abandon me at this point. Why? David knew he doesn't have a father. He doesn't have brethren. He doesn't have anybody to run to. And so, if God abandoned him on halfway, everything will be ended. And so, he just said, God, my hope is in you. Look at verse 8. See verse 8. Take verse 2 first. Take verse 2. Bow down thy ears to me. Deliver me how speedily. Be thou my strong rock. For an house of what? Defense. Do what now? Save me. See, I needed you to just save me. No man can save me. No brother can save me. No church can save me. I just needed you, Lord, to save me. As he went back to the Lord. And so the failure of God would have been the end of David's life. And so God proved to him that look, David, though I chastise people, but I don't abandon people. Can I tell you one good news? No matter what you went through, does not mean that God has abandoned you. God can watch things happening, but God cannot abandon his people. That is what I know about him. And that is the message today. That you would have looking like you are abandoned. But good news is you are not abandoned. God will encourage you again. I wish I have some people here that can give me good amen. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Psalm 31 verse 12. David says, I am forgotten as a dead man. Out of mind. It says everybody, everybody has forgotten me. God, have you also forgotten me? He said, look, look, look at look at that scriptures. He said, I am like a broken vessel, a vessel that is not carrying anything. That kind of vessel is living. People can see a vessel, but nothing inside of it. It's just like a man that dresses well, but doesn't have ten thousand naira in his bank account. That kind of life will not happen to you again. You are not talking to me. <laughs> Have you seen that kind of thing before? Don't put up your hand. Today is a secret day. Okay. There are times you just see the man like this, he dressed like this and kicked up. But tell him, give me 5,000. No way. You come to the pulpit, he's shouting. You tell him, bring 1,000. He said, the Lord will do it. Good news. I say good news. <laughs> Don't be in a haste. Don't give up. The Lord has not abandoned you. Your pocket will revive again. Yeah. Why are you not saying amen? Did you give me anointing? Yeah. I say your pocket will revive again. Yeah. How many of you believe that God can cause you to smile again? For the art is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He will do it again. He will make it again. He will perfect it again. And so he graduated from there and said, I am in God's hand. He said, now that nothing can hold me, let me go back to where? God's hand. In verse 18, chapter 31, verse 18. In verse 18, it says, let the lying leaves be put to silence. He said, all these people who are saying they will kill me, you are put to silence. I am in God's hand. And then look at it. It says, I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be what? 
ashamed and let them be what? Silent in where? In the grave. God is taking all my enemies to the grave. Uh, whether I pray about it or not is scriptural. He said, let them be silent, put all of them into grave, and prove to them that I am in your hand. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. Open your Bibles. Look, keep looking at the Bible. Keep looking at it. In verse 15, it says, My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies. It says, I knew I am in God's hand. Nothing will touch me. Let me not be in a haste to run away. I am in God's hand. Everywhere you go, you are in God's hand. He will cover you with his feather. He will hold you with his hand. Say there is nothing to worry about. Can you talk to me? Say it again. Absolutely nothing to worry about. And then from there, and so we are going to look at three points now briefly. Point number one, never give up. Never give up. Never. It, it, it may be so bad, but never give up. And then point number two, step out by faith. Step out by faith. Do not wait for a brother, a sister, whosoever to determine your life. Your life is in your hands. And from your hands to God's hand. Your life is in the hands of your God. Your God can give you solution. Step out by faith. Don't think you can't go to the university. You can go. Go and pick form first. Don't wait for money. Go there. Go and get the form first. Don't wait. Don't think you cannot marry. Go and see the wife first. You've not seen the wife. You're looking for money. Why? Go and look for the wife first. You have not getting this and then you are asking for this. Get the first and the second will come. Give me amen. amen. I say get the first and the second will uh, come. Point number one, never give up. In Psalm 31 verse 22, it said, for I said in my haste, I am cut off. I was in a haste. And I said this, I thought I'm finished. But I wasn't finished. You are not finished. Am I talking to somebody? Okay, there is no soup in your house. Are you finished? Talk to me. No soup. Are you finished? No school fees. Are you finished? No, you're not talking to me. Your business is crumble. You're finished? Eh? If I were you, that time I would send all my clothes to laundry. And then I will wear that clothes. And when devil see, it will be seen light inside the cloth. You know why? The light shined, darkness comprehended it not. And so the light that is coming from me, the life that is coming from me, Satan will be scared. You know, what of you, when life is that bad, you wear bathroom slippers and go to church. You say, let me just do this so that they will know let the church have some mercy in me. Why is it that this church, even though when you even dress like say you are dressing right, yet they know they get small mercy. The church doesn't need to have mercy on you. It's God that have mercy on people. See, it says, appear before the throne. You can't be going to the throne with bathroom slippers. You are a king. When you are coming to the church, you are coming like a king. Say a king. Amen. You dress like a king. You look like a king. You are not going to be looking that life and then they look at you. He said, why are you doing like this? He said, don't worry. I am holiness unto the Lord. It's a watch, word, and song. 
Holiness will reflect on your body and reflect inside of you and take you to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 116 verse 11. 116 verse 11. In Psalm 116 verse 11, it says, in verse 11, it says, I said in my haste, all men are liars. But that was not true. That was not true. David says, it was in my haste. I thought that everybody were a liar. Because the first man who talked to me that he was going to marry me disappointed me. So after that day, anybody that take my name to the church and want to marry me is a liar. I generalize everything. Do you know that that was how the other one disapp disappointed me? This one is also a liar. It says, in my haste, I thought everybody was a liar. Do you know that even now, some people are assessing me. They want to compare me with Pastor A. Oh, but are you sure this one is also going to disappoint us? How will you be thinking that kind of thing? How? David says, I did that in a haste. How are you so much in a hurry? To judge a man you've never worked with. I know a man in the Bible that says my case is different. Is your case different? Talk to me. My own case is different. God will keep you and preserve you in Jesus name. There is something I learned there. I tell you what I learned there. Number one. Discouragement can speak louder than courage. Discouragement speak louder than courage. That's what I see there. That's the first thing I see. And I don't see people writing. That's the first thing I see. It means because of discouragement, the man was condemning everybody already. Two, hopelessness can kill. Kill faster than hope himself. When there is hopelessness, the man is closer to grave. You die. Because the only thing that sustains you is hope. And when your hope is dead, vision is equally dead. When your hope is dead, your dreams are dead. You won't let your hope die. He get to a time when David let his hope die and he started condemning every process. He says, now that looking like God has abandoned me, everything has ended, my, my own is finished, I will need to rethink. And he said, I almost give up. You will not give up. You will never give up. You will stand for the Lord in Jesus' name. What do you think was frightening David? What do you think was making David say all of this? It was not his friends. It was not his neighbor. It was not all those people. What has made him feel so bad was that he felt that God has disappointed him. The worst stage of a man, of a Christian, is when you not think that God has disappointed you. Pastor can disappoint you, but God cannot disappoint you. Church can disappoint you, but God cannot disappoint you. Am I talking to somebody? When you get to that level, where you not think that God can disappoint, you won't be able to serve God again. You will think that there is no even God existing anywhere. Look at him now. In Psalm 31, look at verse 23. Verse 23. It thought that God will also disappoint him. In verse 23, he said, Oh, love the Lord, all ye saints, for the Lord preserve the faithful. And do what? Plentifully rewarded the proud doers. He says, I didn't know that God can be this faithful. I didn't know that he was not going to disappoint me. So it's fear was he was thinking that God was going to do what? 
disappoint him. That was his fear. His fear was not the friends. His fear was not lion. His fear was not bear. His fear was not Goliath. His fear was, oh, do you think that God will still take me back? No matter what you have done, God will still take you back. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Give me amen. amen. I say, God will still, talk, will still take you back. Amen. The heart of God is so large. He cannot accommodate anything. He receives you. He will accept you. You commit abortion, don't worry. That was yesterday. Today is a new day. I said today is what? A new day. The Lord will forgive you. Every sin you have committed, the Lord will forgive you. I will receive you again and make you glorious in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 34, verse 9. I'm showing you his fears. 34, verse 9. The fear of David. 34, verse 9. It says, Oh, fear the Lord. Say, that was my fear. Fear him all. That was my fear. Ye is what? Saints. For there is no want to them that do what? I fear the Lord. He moved a big forward, a backward, and he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He says, There is no want with a man that fear the Lord. He said, I fear them greatly. When I was in that pain, and he never allowed me to go through any want. He miss all my needs because I feared him. If you fear the Lord, he will meet that needs in Jesus' name. Google the amen. amen. Psalm 145 verse 20. 145 verse 20. See David. 145 verse 20. 145 verse 20 says, The Lord preserve all them that love them. But all the wicked will he do what? He will destroy all of them. Psalm 94 verse 2. 94 of Psalm verse 2. Psalm 94 in verse 2. It says, Lift up thyself Thou judge of the earth, render a reward. To which people? The pride. You are not going to be arrogant. Just fear the Lord and respect the Lord. And he will take care of all your wants in Jesus' name. Point number two, step out by faith. And so, as David was going through these pains, he was in the forest. He was outside people going through this pain. A day came. He said, I'm stepping out by faith. He went back to the city. As soon as he got back to the city, they says, come, there is a man called Goliath. If he was still in the forest, he wouldn't hear that news. His life would have remained the same. If he was still hiding for trouble, he would step out and there would not be any testimonies in his life. He stepped out of the forest. He stepped out from alone. alone. He stepped out from loneliness. He stepped out from trouble. He stepped out of grief. He stepped out of discouragement. He stepped out from pain. And he stepped into the city. Ask me, David, you are coming back to the city. You don't even know your mother. Where are you going to stay? David, you are coming back to the city. Where are you going to sleep? And he have three brothers. One is called Eli. What is the name of the other one again? Abinadak. What is the name of the other one again? Shama. Who is telling me all those things? Let me, let me see that person. God bless you. Bible scholars. And he has those three brothers. They were waiting. As soon as David came out of the forest. The first one that met him and tell him what are you come to do here. What is his name? Elia, he said, come. I know you even before we send you to the forest, your pride. What brought you here? 
David stepped out by faith. He just came by faith. Leave me, I am walking by faith. Step out by faith. And God will announce you. When he saw David, he thought he the same David. You know where he missed it? Did you know where he missed it? This was the second appearance of David. David appeared the first time and there was a horn of oil on his head. And Eli was there. He saw the oil, but he didn't understand the oil. You know, sometimes people see, people can see you now, a great man of God, but they don't understand you. They still rate you. It's from our village. But you are no longer a man from village. Level have changed. Give me great, great, amen. You know, there are some people that will still see me now. They still remember yesterday. They say, come, we know him, a Tyler. But the man has gone. It's no longer a Tyler. There is a horn of oil on his head. It came with that power. And I think that his size is not size. Greater is he that is in me. Than the size of Eli. Than the size of Goliath. And so in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 17 verse 37. Open your Bible. 1 Samuel 17. David stepped out by faith. As you live here. You are stepping out by faith. Amen. Get into what you have never tried before and it will work for you now. Amen. David has killed the lion, killed the bear. He has never killed Goliath. In Psalm 17, 1 Samuel 17, from verse 37 and 38, see verse 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that deliver me out of the pounds of the lion, he says, I still remember yesterday, and out of the pounds of the bear, I still remember yesterday, he will do what? Deliver me out of the hand of these Philistines. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord do what? Be with thee. For the first time, Saul prayed a good prayer. For the first time in his life. Do you see what happened in life? When you are courage, you turn your friend to be courageous. When you have courage, you turn people around you to follow you. If your courage is not strong enough, they win you. If your courage is strong enough, you will carry them at the end of the day. And that's what is happening now. Some people, their courage is dead, so they are converting them. And then some that their courage are strong, they are ending up converting more. Your courage will be strong. Nobody will turn your head around. Your courage will be very strong in Jesus' name. Look at him in verse 38. And so armed David with, underline the word, his armor. Wrong. So, you are seeing me for the first time. You don't know how I killed lion. It was not by your own armor. I killed the bear. Not by your own armor. I'm going to kill Goliath. Not with your own armor. How many people understand that our faith are not the same thing? The way these people do their Christian life cannot be the way we do our Christian life. We can't be the same thing. If they, let's say you live here now, you go to a church that don't preach holiness, don't preach righteousness, and not believing in heaven, you won't be comfortable through our force. You won't be comfortable. It's not you. That is not you. You just be managing, but you can be comfortable. You 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 you'll be trouble on the inside. And so David David says, So I wore this thing, but the thing is too heavy for me. And then Saul said, Go. If you don't go like this, you're not going to win Goliath. 
And so David moved out of the presence of Saul and went out and removed everything. I love that guy. That was wisdom. If he has gone to meet with this man with Saul and Goliath would have finished his life. How many people today they keep emblem on the face of the motto. If anything happened, they say the God of this emblem. Fake. Calendar in the house has become a God for them. They are not trusting and then overseer name. The God of Pastor Lord. Stop it. Don't mention it any day. Pastor Lawson doesn't have a God. Shout Jesus, that is the man. Let's go back to the cross. It's the cross. It's Jesus. And we'll be fine in Jesus' name. I say we'll be fine in Jesus' name. Look at verse 45. Then said David to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword. And with a spear and with a shield. Look at it. But I come to thee. Not with the arm from Saul. Not with my mentality. Not with my wisdom. I come to thee with what? Everybody? In the name of the Lord of hosts. And he brought that man to the ground. He stepped out by faith. You are going out by faith and God will solve all the problems in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Matthew 10 verse 36. Matthew 10, 36. Matthew 10, 36. We pray now. Matthew 10, 36. It says, And a man's food shall be of his... What? A lab man of his household. Stop him. And then the other one, three of them, they were stopping him. They were a man of his household. Did you see what happened there? When David came back, nobody opposed him. Even the man that was a king said, go, the Lord be with you. But the people that come from the house of David says, what brought you here? People that come from your lineage will not see any good thing in you. People that come from the same mother with you will not see any good thing with you. That is why in Proverbs 17, 17, open it. In Proverbs 17, 17, look at Proverbs 17, 17. They are not going to see any good thing in you. Don't let what the people so close to you say demoralize you. You know when I started, all those people close to me, they say, come, I believe him, what is he doing? Until you succeed, your brother will not look for you. It is when you succeed, he will look for you. And when he's coming to look for you, that time he's coming like this with dagger. And then if somebody's passing, he says, I will choke you now. It's my brother. You don't know it's my brother. And then if somebody's passing, he says, come, I carry knife here. It's my brother. He will go around and tell people it's my brother church. He don't know it's my brother church. <laughs> it wasn't with his brother when his brother started. <laughs> now his brother has succeeded. All those children that stand up as look at the eye of a pastor like this, I will deal with you. It's my pastor church. He didn't know how you struggle with the father. Today, it's my father church. And all those women that will say it's my husband, church. Nobody owns the church. Upon this rock, I will do what? Build my church. The church is belonging to Christ. <laughs> How dare you say it's my church? Who give you a church? A church is a miracle. It's not your own. You don't own a church. You can never own a church. You know, it's just like what I said there one day when I came here, and I said, never said it anywhere. I said, Pastor Lawson is given this for the Lord, given this. I said, Pastor Lawson cannot fund the gospel. You do not, you don't, you don't have the money. 
God's size is too big for a man to fund it. No man born of a woman can fund the gospel because the gospel is too big for a man to fund it. Look at Proverbs 17, 17. In Proverbs 17, 17, it says, A friend, do what? Love it at all times. Look at it now. And a brother is born for what? For trouble. For problem. For headache. If you wear a suit, your brother say, why will he wear that type of suit? If you eat, he say, why will he eat two times? A brother is born for what? Aversity. And I pray that no mountain, all these, our brothers, people close to us, they will not be able to stop us in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three, God rewarded David's hope. God rewarded his hope. God saw his hope and rewarded his hope. And all the hope, your place in the Lord. God will reward you today in Jesus' name. In Psalm 31, verse 24. For time, I want to read this scripture we are praying right now. Psalm 31, verse 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that do what? Hope in the Lord. The Lord rewarded that hope. How many of you have hope that God will see you through again? How many of you believe that God can do it again? Stand up and tell the Lord, I know you can do it again. Open your mouth and pray. And go back to the Lord. Talk to the Lord with all amount of seriousness. And tell him, I know you can do it again. You're not going to leave me like this. You're not going to abandon me. You're not going to leave me in this position. You're not going to leave me in this situation. You're going to set me free. You're going to do it again. I know you are doing it again. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give me amen. You know, it surprised me when people hear a message and they don't pray. I pray that God will baptize you with the spirit of prayers in Jesus' name. You are going to pray and say, I refuse to be abandoned. Open your mouth to pray that prayer. Make that decree. I refused to be abandoned either by man or by God or by destiny or by nature I refuse to be abandoned I will never be used and abandoned God you will never let me be abandoned Never let me be abandoned. I'm not an abandoned property. I'm a child with testimony. You're going to perform what only you will perform. You do it again, you make it again. I know you will do it. Make my life a life of testimonies. I refuse to be abandoned. My time to be in the forest is over today. My time to be alone is over today. My time of loneliness is over today. My time of crying is over today. It is my time to step out. It is my time to step out. A 
am not abandoned. I can remain here. I'm not abandoned. I cannot die here. It is my time to step out. And I'm stepping out with power. I'm stepping out in the name of the Lord. I'm stepping out with the name of Jesus. I'm 